separate possessions right now for both teams by using both hands. It's been defended by Crawford. Partially blocked from behind by Bradley. Patterson is still laboring, running up and down that floor. That, that leg does not feel 100%, but you still go to your hoss, and 54 and white is your hoss. He wants it. They get it down there. There you go, Merrill. 60-55. Bill Greer trying to spread that floor. I think he thinks that Jones with that basketball and Johnson have the ability to drive against this Kentucky pressure. In the basket in the open floor. Ginty with his free throw there. His first of the season, now with a dozen. 13 for Devin Ginty. Bill Greer defended Patterson, and his answer on the offensive end has been very impressive. Patterson got it. Threw it up and missed the shot. Here comes Brandon Johnson. Not tough enough to come away with a traffic rebound that time for Kentucky, and it could cost him. Ginty faked the three and lost it. Got caught on the knee. No need for Ginty to try to make that play with a lead on the road. Crawford looking for Rome. Off the glass. Made something happen. Went to the bucket. Found an opening and comes up with two. Back. Fortunate that it's not 64 points instead of 62 for San Diego. What are they not doing defensively that they should be doing in this game? Almost gave it up there, Kentucky did. On the floor. Ginty all alone. And he buries the three. Wow. Four triples in this game for the walk-on freshman. But to quickly answer your question, Kentucky, they've been burned by three-point shooting. They've been burned by guys that have beaten them off the bounce. Their help defense, their communication has not been solid. When Kentucky wins, it's because of their defense, and it has not been there in this ball game. Patterson with... I, I like the timeout by Bill Greer because he looks up. He knows he has a lead with three minutes and 25 seconds to go, and you have to talk to your kids now if you're Bill Greer about it, okay, I have an answer. You take away our strength so far in this game. Here's my next question for you to answer. San Diego, 30% from three-point range coming in, Billy. In this contest, 56% from the floor. They've made nine of 16 trays. Down low, Homer fronts the bucket. Shot doesn't go. Loose on the floor, and Bradley is fouled. Here up arena, if you missed the first game, Wisconsin with a monster win in Austin against non-ranked Texas earlier today. Mike Flowers with a three-pointer to win it, 67-66 for the Badgers. And Bo Ryan, Bradley knocks down the free. Six-point game. We approach the three-minute mark. Kentucky is desperate for back-to-back -back shutouts. That's another sign of toughness. And you get back-to-back -back stops when the game's on the line. And they put Crawford on Johnson. Johnson almost gave it up. Now Johnson will go to work off the bounce with the shot clock winding down. Kentucky chases him. Good job. Ginty finds Jackson. Rolling to the bucket. Uses the right hand. Uh-uh. But who was there to clean up a Palmer? The, the, the toughest guy around the rim in this ballgame has been Gino Palmer. Getting those traffic two-hand rebounds on the defensive end and some key putbacks on the offensive end. Almost as many offensive rebounds as the fake. You don't clean up an offensive rebound by Kentucky and then you come down and turn it over. Tough teams, championship teams, they don't make back-to-back -back mistakes late in the game. Jones, defended by Patterson. Greer is really trusting Johnson and Jones just to maybe dribble this game out on the perimeter. Let them control it off the bounce. San Diego chewing up the clock. they are under 10 on the shot clock. Jackson against Harris. Right around Harris. Had partially blocked there by Stevenson. Uh, he gives it right back to Brandon Johnson. What a gift. you got to be kidding me. From the time you're in the third grade, you're taught if you have the ball underneath the other team's basket, never do what... Bradley makes the free throw. And shoot another. That's not a sign you want to see if you're a Kentucky fan. But this thing is not over. I mean, down eight points.
points with almost two minutes to go. Gillespie brings in the shooter, Meek. Stevenson takes a seat. Bradley made the free throws, but he's had a tough goal it from the floor today. Just two of ten from the field. I think you've got to be aggressive and, and foul here. Kentucky has not shown the ability to stop San Diego. There it is. And he has had a lot of pressure on him handling that basketball in the second 20 minutes for, for Bill Greer. And he has played with a huge Valentine underneath that dark blue jersey. Has not turned that thing over. Has been tough with it. Has just toyed with every Kentucky defender that they have put on him. And he's controlled the game off of the bounce for Bill Greer. Last year's defense at San Diego allowed 74 points a game. This year, the Toreros third in the West Coast Conference and fewest points allowed at 64 points a contest. And they haven't allowed an opponent to score 80 or more in a game this season. We've seen some tough defense from San Diego today. And in the first game of what could be called the SEC WCC doubleheader with Tennessee and Gonzaga coming up next. Nice Bruce Pearl and 12th ranked Tennessee coming up against Gonzaga right here on ESPN2. Part of our. Plenty of long faces here at Rupp Arena. And Lou, I, I know this is not what we call the, the, the normal Kentucky team, you know, a sweet 16 type run. But you cannot take away from what San Diego has done in this ball game today because Kentucky still has guys like Bradley and Crawford and Patterson. Jasper played some minutes today. Meeks is back on the floor. And for them to come in here and execute, change their defense with great precision, kept Kentucky off balance on the offensive end. And they had to have an answer. When they three-point shot went away from San Diego, they had an answer. And it resolved around uh, number one, Brandon Johnson. Bradley shot off the do they well, you're serve, going to put me on the yep. spot now. Do they serve hot dogs and M&Ms at the Jenny Craig Pavilion? <laughs> they can see in the staff and the Bluegrass faithful right now. Ball game, and they're hopefully to, to, to get a hope of what we're going to be and good practices and the emphasis of getting Patterson touches. Here did it like Dan Feldhouse and John Pill. I, I, love, I love the story for this kid on the free throw stripe. Devin Ginty had played a total of 38 minutes, a freshman walk-on prior to this game. And how many points does he have now? Ginty now with 18. How about that? Four that threes. Unbelievable. He had taken eight shots all year long. Stevenson. Right up, gets it to Jones. Over the timeline. That's, that's, uh, there's no reason for all this time to be going off the clock. Billy Gillespie, only coach in college basketball history to coach. The nation's most improved team in back-to-back -back seasons. First, he did it at UTEP and Texas A&M. He's got his work cut out for him here against Kentucky. And again, trailing, and this is how quickly you have to do it. This is how we do it. Conclusion of this contest. They're high. 27. Meeks. Tied up. Throws it up. This is everything. And the energy they got when Derek Jasper came onto the floor for the first time and maybe a glimpse of what they're going to try to become in uh, January, February, March. But a look back at Kentucky history at home. Where they've won well over 80% of their ball games. Well, I, I salute Bill Greer and his staff for bringing a club in here from the WCC that's six and eight and not going to go to seven and eight and convincing his kids that they can win in Rupp Arena regardless of how strong of a Kentucky team it is for Bill Greer to take his club from San Diego and bring him in here in front of 23,000 and win I salute the coaching job of Bill Greer in this ball game and that is all she wrote San Diego pulls off the upset, knocking off Kentucky 81-72. Up next here on ESPN2, more college hoops. 12th-ranked Tennessee against Gonzaga. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Jimmy Dykes, I'm Luke Cadellis. So long from Lexington. Now let's go to John Shambi in Seattle.